today's yoga session is intended to be a like five-part thing and all of the five parts could be done individually. So we're starting with seated mobilization, which is about 20-ish minutes. Then there is um, tabletop mobilization with a lot of cat-cow and um, some wrist mobilization, which is maybe 10-15 minutes. And we're doing standing sequence with two sun citations and some other standing poses, which is about also 15 minutes, a sequence that is on the mat, on the floor, we're lying on our backs and um, just seated. And that's about 15 to 20 minutes again. And then the last one is a pranayama practice, which is Nadashadama, alternate nostril breathing. You may need a block and I also um, give a couple of options with a cushion and also a yoga belt or if you don't have a belt then a belt from a bathrobe or a towel or scarves are really good for that. Um, another note is I have an injured ankle, hence this really beautiful um, brace and it's not nothing bad but I'm not going to be in the downward dogs and the sun stations for very long with you. So I'll talk you through it, but if you check, I'll be in more of a tabletop version if you look at your screen. Um, but yeah, loads of options um, for any ability and anything that you feel like today. I hope you enjoy it. Um, All right, so as I said, um, if you want some cushions, I think that's a good idea. And then belt as well, I'll definitely need it. Um, and maybe some blocks as well, but use however many props you want or need. Um, we're going to start just sitting cross-legged. Um, you could take a block or a pillow and just sit on that to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, I, just as a little um, side note, I sprained my ankle a little while ago, which is still, it's getting better, but I won't be, I'll still demonstrate, but I might not stay in the pose for very long. Down dog is brilliant on my ankle at the moment. Um, and the sort of how I structured this class was with a little bit of a um, thought of Christmas coming and if you're with family and everything, and just to sort of have bite size. So every part of the session, I say like five parts, you could do individually almost. So we're starting with stretches seated, then we're going to do things in tabletop, then we're going to have the standing poses, and um, then we'll go on the floor, and last we'll do a breathing exercise. And all of those things you could theoretically do on their own. Obviously, now the regulations in London have changed, so we're not allowed to be with family really. But anyway, if you ever just want like a 10, 15 minute yoga um, stretch, you could just do any of those five pieces. And um, one of the things that I've realized with having, um, just with my ankle being a bit delicate at the moment, is that we think of yoga as the the, the physical movements that we do in the yoga class, but that is actually only one of the eight limbs, as I say, of, low, of yoga. Um, breathing practices is another limb, which is only a tiny part that we do at the end of the yoga class, and sometimes not at all. So thinking, oh, I'm not doing yoga because I'm injured, isn't actually the case. You can do yoga without moving. You can do breathing practices, meditation is another one of those eight limbs, um, reading and educating yourself, all of those things are yoga as well. So I just think that's quite a nice way of thinking about what yoga means. Okay, so as I said, we're going to start seated, sitting cross-legged, however is comfortable. Maybe if you have any problems with your ankle like I do, you could put a cushion under it going to put our hands on our knees, palms facing up. We're rolling our shoulders up, back and down. Head nice and high, chin tucked a little bit so that we've got a nice flat neck. From the side a little bit, nice flat neck. 
I'm just going to breathe here for a moment, starting in the seated pose. Leaving everything behind that has happened before. Leaving everything behind that's coming after today, anything that's going on around us, any news, any worries. We'll try to be present. Try not to be too concerned over what is going on. With the eyes closed, you don't want to squint them shut. You just want the eyelids to gently touch. Breathing in and out through the nose. Slowing our breath and slowing our mind. Noticing where we're feeling our breath. I'm feeling it mainly in our abdomen and our belly moving. I'm feeling in our side ribs moving apart, our diaphragm. I'm feeling it on our chest lifting. Using our breath as an anchor here so that our mind doesn't wander too much. Taking a few breaths in your own time. Deepening the breath, breathing in, filling the whole lungs and breathing out. One more breath, deep in and exhale. Inhale and at the end of the next exhale, gently open our eyes. We're going to start with our um, sort of general, that we generally do our seated mobilizations. We're going to do a nice side stretch. We're going to inhale, raising the right arm, left hand next to us, and exhale with stretching and reaching your right hand freely as if you're trying to touch whatever wall is to the side of you. And inhale, we're coming through center, we're raising our left arm. And exhale, we're reaching again, trying to go as far as we can. Inhale, we're coming through center again, we're switching arms, reaching, really reaching with your fingertips, looking to the palm. Inhale, we're switching over. Exhale, reach and stretch, feeling that stretch in our side body. Inhale, we're switching over and we're staying here for a few breaths. Nice, really reaching over, maybe pushing our chest slightly towards the ceiling, opening our chest to the sky or the ceiling. Keep reaching here if you want, looking towards your palm, if that's uncomfortable on your neck, just looking straight ahead. Inhale, feel that length coming into your body. Exhale, maybe reaching a bit more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, maybe going deeper, bending that lower arm a bit more. One more breath here, inhale. 
exhale and inhale coming through center exhale other side lovely everyone staying here for a few breaths reaching with that top hand again maybe opening that chest a little bit to the ceiling moving that chest into the room breathing here feeling through the contraction in our right side body and the length in the left Inhale, reach, exhale, now we're melting a bit more. Inhale, reach, maybe bending the elbow more, but maybe not. One more breath, inhale, and exhale, we're pushing into the ground, coming up into center. Place your hands in your lap, lap. go and roll the shoulders up, back and down, and just sit here for one breath. Maybe closing our eyes if we want to. Feeling the effects of that pose. Opening our eyes, we've closed them, and we're going to do our side twist. So we're going to place our right hand either on our left knee or the back of the hand against the outside, just above the knee. And we're going to place our left hand behind us. Inhale and exhale, we're twisting over. What I quite like to do now is I, I, as I twist, imagine I'm pulling that right hand down. I want to touch the ground with my fingertips. That way the twist is coming more from that right shoulder. One more breath here. Inhale and exhale, we're coming in center, we're letting go. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So placing our left hand on our right knee or the back of the hand against the outside of the knee, if that's possible. We're going to place our right hand behind us in sort of a tent finger position. We're going to inhale and exhale with twists, and maybe again trying to slide that outside of that hand down, aiming to touch our fingertips to the ground, twisting from that left shoulder. One breath here, inhale. And exhale, we're coming to center. Very nice. So we're going to do that again. We're going to do that once more short and a bit shorter than we just did. And then we're going to do one where we're staying for quite a while. All right, so back of the right hand outside the left knee. Left hand finger tense behind us. Inhale, exhale, we twist. Inhale and exhale, we come through the middle. Right hand, uh, left hand outside right knee, right hand behind us. Inhale, we lift, we stretch. Exhale, we twist. Inhale, and exhale, we release. Other side, right hand, left knee, outside left knee, left hand behind us. Inhale, stretch up really nice and tall, sitting up tall. Exhale, we twist. And we're twisting from our waist from our shoulder, not from the neck. The neck is sort of following, but the neck doesn't have to look over our shoulder, giving us a neck cramp, cramp, just sort of looking gently ahead, following our body. We're also twisting from the right shoulder by pushing our right hand against the outside of the left knee or the palm against the left knee. Feeling that stretch feeling that rotation in our spine. One more breath here, inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale, we gently release, we're letting go of the left hand, we're sliding that right hand through, over. Lovely, same thing in the side. So, left hand, back of the left hand, outside the right knee or palm against the knee. Left, right hand behind us. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, twist. Looking over, like sort of in the direction of our shoulder, but not forcing anything. Really nice. Feeling that twist in our shoulder. Feeling our shoulder blade. The right hand, so our right shoulder moving. Breathing here.
One more inhale. One more exhale. Inhale and exhale. We're letting go of that right hand behind us, sliding that left hand from our knee. Palms either in our lap or on our knees, whatever feels good. And let's just sit here for a moment. If you need to do a counter movement, you could roll your shoulders, letting go of that twist. Lovely. We are going to do forward fold in cross-legged and just really gently, we're just walking our hands out in front of us and we're just going to head down. If we don't, we'll, if this is really early on, so we don't need to get our forehead onto the ground. If you wanted, you could take your block and you could actually rest your forehead on the block so that your neck doesn't have to hold your head or anything. Quite a nice passive stretch. Just staying here wherever you are. Breathing for two more. Connecting with that breath in and out through the nose. And with the next inhale, we're pressing into our hands, we're slowly walking back as we exhale. We're going to do the same thing again, but we're switching our feet around. So now the other foot is in front or in half lotus or how we were sitting. And we're going to walk out, our hands in front of us again. If your knees are finding that too uncomfortable, you could just, you could even have your feet on the floor like that wide and just go down like that, forward in between your legs like so. Whatever feels good to you. Stay for two more breaths. Noticing how you, where you feel the stretch, whether it's different to the other side. We tend to be, we're right or left handed, so we use one side of our body a bit more. We tend to be a bit tighter on one side of the body. But that doesn't, isn't anything negative. It's just something to notice. And on the next inhale, we're pressing into our hands coming up our elbows if we were on the and we're walking our hands back on the exhale. All right, we're going to sit either, you can continue to sit cross-legged, you could also bring your feet on the floor with your knees bent, whatever is more comfortable. I'm going to do a couple of neck stretches. So as we inhale, we're going to raise our right arm up, and we're going to place our right hand on our fingertips on our left ear. Inhale here and exhale very gently, just placing the weight of that arm, of that hand, on our neck and just stretching that left neck. You can leave your hand on your knee, you could bring it to the side. If you stretch your hand out to the side a little bit more, you intensify that stretch. We're just saying for a couple of breaths. Really nice. The next exhale, we're going to let go of that hand. We're going to leave our neck how it is. Breathe here for one. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, we're gently lifting our head up into center. Really nice. We want to stretch our neck. We don't want to injure it well, so we're trying to do that. Now we're going to do the other side. We inhale, we're lifting our left arm. Exhale, we're bringing, bending the arm, bringing the fingertips on our ear neck. Inhale and exhale, gently moving that neck, moving our neck to the side, to the left, placing the weight of our arm on our head. Very gentle. Here again, you could bring your, your hand could be on your knee or it could be to the side. Breathing here, feeling that stretch in your neck, maybe even pulling into your shoulder. One more breath, inhale. And on the exhale, we're letting go of that arm. We're lowering down, keeping our neck as it is. And on the next inhale, coming up into center. Really nice. 
We'll be doing a quick circle. Now we're going to clasp our hands like so, interlace them. We're going to bring them sort of in the, not our neck, but sort of in the middle of our, of our head here where it's sort of like, yeah, sort of like just above our ears. We're going to place our hands there. Inhale and exhale, we're just pulling down gently, tucking our chin to our chest. I'm using the weight of our arms here to stretch our neck, the back of our neck, and just breathing here. You could bring your elbows a bit closer in. I think it feels good to me, but if something else feels good to your body, then listen to your body. Breathing here again, not pulling your neck, not yanking, just gently having that stretch. Inhale. Exhale, letting go of the hands, we're keeping our neck as it is. And on the next inhale, we're gently lifting our head. Now, we're going to stretch our neck in the other direction, but without any support of our hands. So we're just going to inhale and exhale, we're lifting our head up. Putting our neck head into our the back. If that's uncomfortable, please don't do it, your neck is very gentle. Try to keep our mouth, mouth shut and feeling that stretch in our throat. Closing our eyes maybe, gently again the eyelids touching. the next inhale very gently bringing the head up nothing we're going to do circles with our head now and imagine you're making drawing a circle with your nose imagine like a crayon on your nose we're going to either direction is fine i'm going to go towards the left first so moving my nose to the left looking up to the side and going up going to the other side and then going down, drawing that lovely big circle. Going to do two more of those. Really nice, nice and slow. And one more. And when we're back where we started, we're going to go in the other direction. So going down, looking to the side, looking up, going down, to the side, up. To the other side, down, one more, to the side, up, other side, and now it's just coming to center. Lovely, really nice, nice little neck stretch there. We're going to, <laughs> just going to take, it's actually taking a lot longer, this initial uh, mobilization, but let's just keep going with it. Um, let's do a quick shoulder stretch. So we're just going to hug ourselves. So you just touch your shoulder blades. One arm will be on top. Just note which arm is on top, which elbow is on top. And just breathe here for two. Pulling your shoulder blades apart. Okay, we're going to let go of that and we're going to interlace the other way around. So the other elbow is on top now. Nice. Really gentle shoulder stretch here. And let go. Let's roll our shoulders. Now we're going to touch our left shoulder with our right hand. We're going to bring our left hand just beyond the elbow. We're just going to push 
gently stretch it here. And maybe we can see that our right hand is sort of moving in between our shoulder blades, just below our neck. Just breathe here, feeling that stretch again. All right, let's gently release that and do the other side. So we're touching our right shoulder with our left hand. Right hand be up between elbow and shoulder. And just gently pressing, gently supporting our stretch here. And maybe again, walking that left hand now between our shoulders. Okay, brilliant. Letting go of that. And last one, or second to last one, we're going to do eagle arms. So we're again touching our left shoulder with our right hand. We're bending our left arm around that elbow. And we're going to let go of the shoulder of the right hand. And we can see if we can either, we can leave the backs of our hands to touch, or maybe we can bring our palms to touch. Inhaling here, and as we exhale, we're pushing our elbows forward and away from our face, intensifying this shoulder stretch. Right, letting go. And the other side, so the left hand on the shoulder, on the right shoulder, the right arm goes around the left elbow. We're letting go of the right shoulder of the left hand and either backs of the hands touching or maybe palms touching. Inhale and exhale, we're pushing our arms forward, pushing them forward, intensifying that stretch. Really nice, guys. Great. Letting go, rolling our shoulders. We're now going to interlace our fingers again, clasp our hands behind our back. Inhale, our fingers and knuckles are pulling down towards the ground and exhale, we're folding down. Again, don't need to bring your forehead to the mat. Try to push your hands forward. And the next inhale, we're going to sit up because if someone's pulling us by the hands, that they letting go. And we're going to do the same thing again, but we tend to always interlace the same way. So if you interlace your hands and it's the same way as you've just done, do it the other way around. You'll know that it's the other way around because it feels really weird. Somehow it's just like, doesn't feel right. We do the same thing again. So inhale, our knuckles are pulling down behind our back. And exhale, sorry, I should have said behind our back. And then we fold forward again, pulling our hands, stretching our shoulders. And inhale, we're coming up, so someone's pulling us by the hands, and we're letting go. We're rolling our shoulders again. Great, so that was the first part of our little chunk of our yoga session, about 20 minutes. A bit longer than I thought it would be. But obviously you can spend less time doing the various um, stretches, but if you just feel like 20 minutes, that could be something to do. And now we're going to come into a child's pose. Extend the child's pose with our hands out in front of us. Good to breathe here. If you want for your child's pose, you want to have your toes touching, you could have your knees about hip width apart. That's quite a nice one. Sandra, if you find that really uncomfortable and your knee, you could get a cushion and place that between your knees, uh, between your calf and your thigh. That takes a little bit of that stretch out of the child's pose that you're a bit higher up. Or you could even place cushions under your knees where it's uncomfortable. And now we're going to do a little bit more of a shoulder stretch. So we're going to walk our right hand through the center. We want to place our right hand on top of our left hand, trying to keep our head where it is, but it's probably going to move because our arm is pushing it a little bit. And really pressing the hands the left hand into the mat, the right hand on top of the left, left hand. Really nice. And just breathing here. Little side body stretch, little shoulder activation. OK, 
Okay, let's walk that right hand back to where it was. Taking a few breaths here, breaths here in the centre. And now let's walk the left hand over to the right side and press that left hand on top of the right hand, the right hand into the mat. Activating our shoulders and now stretching that left side body. Okay, and let's walk that left hand back to where it was. Have a little breath here. And with our next inhale, we're going to bring our hands under our shoulders and pressing up. And let's come into a tabletop position. We're going to do one more shoulder stretch. So for that, we're going to lift, inhale, we're lifting our in tabletop and we're now lifting our right hand up, stretching our arm up to the ceiling. And exhale, threading the needle. So the right arm goes through the left, the gap between the left hand and the thigh. We're going to bring our right shoulder onto the mat, the cheek, the right cheek also under the mat. And if you want, you can stretch your left hand out in front of you, your left arm out in front of you, pressing into that left hand, pressing your right shoulder into the ground. Any pain at any point, please be gentle, come out. All right, we're going to, if you have stretched out your left arm, we're going to pull it back in, have that left hand in front of our face. Inhale, pressing into that hand. Lifting up again, opening our chest to the right side, and exhale, the right hand comes down. Same thing on the other side. So inhale, we're lifting our left arm up, and exhale, we're threading the needle. Left shoulder down, left cheek down, stretching out that right arm, if you wish. Pressing the right hand into the ground, left shoulder against the mat. Again, any pain, be gentle. We want to work with our body, not against it. All right, on the next inhale, we're pulling our right hand in front of our face. Exhale, inhale, pressing into that right hand, lifting up, and exhale, hands down. Wonderful. We're in our cat cow. So tabletop hands and our um, shoulders, hand, uh, shoulder width apart, knees under hips, hip width apart. You can have your feet, generally I, I like to do cat cow with my feet untucked, but maybe at some point because you've got problems with your ankles or whatever, you'd rather tuck your feet, that's up to you. Inhale, we're going to arch. We're Arching our back, we're looking to the ceiling, maybe bending our elbows a tiny bit, shoulder blades together. Exhale, we're pushing the ground away, we're rounding our spine, squeezing all the air up, chin to chest, looking to the belly button, shoulder blades apart. Inhale, coming into our cow, arched back, shoulder blades together, looking up, shoulders away from the ears, feeling that stretch in our throat again. Exhale. Angry cat, pushing away, shoulders round, round back, round body, squeezing all the air off our lungs. Inhale, round, really arching the back like a C. Exhale, squeezing all the air off our back. Our body is an accordion and we're moving it. One more, inhale for a cow. Really exaggerating that move. Imagine there's a baby elephant sitting on your lower back, really arching. Exhale, we're pushing the ground away. There's a fire under you and you're sucking your belly in so that doesn't get burned. And inhale, coming to a gentle, neutral pose. Lovely. I'm going to, um, 
Inhale, we're stretching our right arm out in front of us. Exhale, hand down. Inhale, we're stretching the left arm out in front of us. Just one limb at a time. Exhale, hand down. Now we're going to do just one leg at a time. Inhale, Ooh, we're stretching that right leg out behind us. Trying to keep our, our body, our hips level. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale, we're lifting the left leg up. Trying to stay level. Exhale, dropping that knee. Inhale, we're lifting our right hand up, right arm up, and the opposite leg, so the left leg that we just put down. I'm going to come here, we're in that Superman pose. Breathing here for three, inhale. Exhale, rebalancing, working our arms, working our abs, working our legs and shoulders as well. Inhale and exhale, placing the hand down, placing the knee down. Other side, inhale, we're lifting our left hand and the right leg up. Pressing into our right hand, stability, pressing into the left knee for stability. If that really hurts, Sandra, then don't worry, you can just do one leg at a time, okay. And inhale, exhale, we're dropping the hand and the knee, coming back into tabletop. Now we're going to try to bind if we can. So inhale, we're lifting our right hand and left knee. And we're going to kick, we bend our knee, we're kicking our foot to the ceiling as much as we can. And then we're going to see if we can grab our foot behind us and kicking that foot into our hands, <laughs> trying to keep our balance, if not, that is okay. And staying here, challenging our balance for one more breath. <laughs> you are good, this is good, guys. All right, coming out whenever you want. <laughs> Always important to laugh in life and in yoga and at ourselves as well. All right, other side. Inhale, lifting the left and the right, the left arm, right leg, kicking that right leg up to the ceiling. And now seeing if we can grab our foot. I always find that side a bit different, more difficult. And balancing here, kicking in as much as it as you want. And releasing that bind and coming back to center. Okay, one more of this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to raise our left hand up. We're going to see if we can, actually, hold on, sorry. So we're going to do the same leg and the same arm now. In order to make this a lot more stable, we can kick our leg over. So what I mean with that is our feet are now behind us. Our feet are pointing sort of in the same direction that our Extend direction, they're straight. What I'm meaning with kicking it out is that we move our foot to be outside the mat. That we've got a little bit more of um, contact with the ground that way and a bit of a counterweight. So I'm starting with the, we're lifting the left arm and the left leg at the same time. So we're kicking out that right leg so that the right foot is outside the mat. And we inhale, we lift our leg, the left leg. And we hold here for an exhale. And then we inhale and try to lift the left arm as well. Very nice. Good, 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 good. And we're lowering the left hand, lowering the left leg. And same thing on the other side. So we're kicking our left leg out as much as we want. It can be quite a bit or only a little bit. We're lifting our right leg up. Inhale, exhale. And now we're inhaling, we're lifting our right hand up. Ooh. And we're staying here for one. It's all right. Losing the balance is part of the exercise. And exhale, bringing it down. All right, let's leave it there. And what's going there? Our wrists. So actually let's push into a quick child's pose before we do anything. Just reconnect to our body and child's pose, to our breath. 
Stay here for two more breaths. Child's pose is always an option no matter where you are in your yoga practice. All right, putting your hands in on your shoulders, pressing up knee line, coming into tabletop again. Let's do a quick cat cow here, just three breaths. Inhale, arching the spine. Exhale, pushing round the spine. Inhale, arching. Exhale, rounding. One more. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And at the end of the exhale, coming into center. And we're going to do our wrist mobilization. So we're going to stay how we are, and we're just going to rock forward and backward to gently wake up our wrists more. Get our wrists used to having carrying a bit of weight. Doing as little of the movements or as big as you want. One more, and then we're going to come into center. We're going to bring our hands in quite a bit. And we're now going to turn our hands in so that our thumbs are pointing to the outside edge of the mat. Our fingertips are pointing to our knees. We're going to gently rock here. Very gently, press the wide fingers, fingers spread out wide, and really pressing into them. If you're here, the heels of your hands lift up a little bit, that's fine, but maybe you can try and really press into those heels of your hands to intensify that stretch as well. Play around with how that feels. Really nice. One more. Come to center. I'm going to release that, come back to how we were before. Now we're going to do one hand at a time and we're going to place the back of our hand on the mat so that our fingers, uh, the palms are facing our fingers um, are pointing to the knees, our thumbs are pointing to the inwards now. And we're rocking here one hand at a time. It's quite intense doing this both hands at the same time. It's a bit much, I think. Or at least it is for me. If it's good for you, then go for that. And to come to center, we're going to flip that hand over, other hand, back of the hand on the mat, thumb facing the inside of the mat, palms facing our fingers towards the fa our face, and rocking here very, very gently. And one more, I'm coming to center. Flipping off, we're going to sit on our heels for a moment. We're just shaking out our hands. Rolling our hands, making circles with our wrists, shaking them out once more. Lovely. So that was part two of our little bite size yoga session. So that was about 15 ish minutes. You obviously could make it a bit longer by doing more cat cows or shorter by cutting out a few poses. We're going to do from here is you can either push into a downward dog and then walk forward, or if you don't want to do too many downward dogs, you can just step forward and step up like that. And to come to standing. And we're going to stand with our feet hip width apart first. We're going to reach up our arms and we're going to grab with the right hand, we're going to grab the, um, the wrist of the left hand. I'm going to pull up onto a full body stretch. Full body stretch here. And let go. Now we're grabbing the right wrist with the left hand. Do the same thing again. Full body stretch. Pulling our shoulders down though. And release. Nice. We are going to bring our feet to touch. And we're going to lift our right foot up and we're going to cross our right foot over our left foot. So the right leg is in front now. We want to have about a foot um, width between our feet. So we're a bit cross-legged. So if you really need to go to the loo but you can't find a toilet. <laughs> and we're going to inhale, raise the right arm up. And exhale, we're pulling the left hand alongside our body. We're pulling that left hand down. And we're stretching the right side body here. If you want, you can look towards the right hand or just straight ahead. 
Um, the next inhale, we're coming up and we're releasing. We do the same thing again, so stepping back, feet to touch. We're going to step our left foot over, so the left leg is in front now. Both feet are facing forward. Arms either side of us, palms against the thighs. Inhale, we're lifting our left arm up. Exhale, sliding our right hand along our thigh. Breathing here. Feeling that stretch in the left side. Almost feeling it coming from the hip and going through our obliques and maybe into our shoulder. And inhale, letting go. We're stepping back. Let's stand in Tadasana. Our feet are touching, if that's all right, or if you prefer to have them hip width apart, that's okay as well. So feet touching, we're lifting all our toes up and we're trying to lower them one at a time, spreading them out wide before so lowering our little toe, our fourth toe, our middle toe, our second toe and our big toe. We're tucking our pelvis, what I mean with that is that we're slightly just up from that to that, just slightly sort of making us a bit flatter, engaging by doing that, engaging our abs, engaging our perineum, perineum our pelvic floor, and pulling our shoulders up, back and down, opening our chest by doing that. Automatically, our palms are facing forward because we're moving our arms a bit. We want to have our neck nice and flat, so the chin is tucked a little bit, but yet, yeah, as if someone's pulling you by the top of the hat, head, standing nice and tall here. Ah, standing here, just feeling this for one moment. If you want, you can close your eyes. That will also challenge your balance. You'll feel like yourself swaying a little bit. Just connecting to yourself. Coming back to that breath in and out through the nose. At the end of the next exhale, we're opening our eyes. And we're moving through some sun salutations. I won't stay in the downward dogs with you the whole time just because of my foot, but you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> so we're inhaling, arms are up, palms together, we're pulling our shoulders down as we're here. Exhale, we're engaging our abs, we're folding down with the flat back. Hands at the side of the feet, bending the knees if we have to. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, we're stepping back with the right foot. Followed by the left foot into a plank. Same here for one breath. Inhale and exhale. We're lowering knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, sliding forward into our cobra. Cobra, elbows are into our body. Toes are untucked, toes are pointing back. Shoulder blades pulling together, shoulders away from the ears. We're engaging our back and our core. Exhale, tucking our toes and pushing into a down dog. If you're here need to step your feet in a little bit because your down dog is a little bit wide, please do so. Your arms are in a very similar pose to how they were in your angry cap. So the shoulder blades are pulling apart, shoulders away from the ears. The arms are strong and straight, not, not overly straight though. Don't want to like lock your elbows. Your fingers, your middle fingers pointing forward, we're pushing into our hands. Your back is flat. If that means that you need to bend your knees a little bit, then please do so. Your heels are pulling towards the ground, but they don't need to touch the ground. If down dog at any time feels like too much, you can come into uh, you can come onto your knees and just have the same arm shape pushing back and just being into like this sort of tabletop-esque down dog. That's what I'm doing right now. One more breath here. And the next inhale, we're stepping the right foot in between our hands, followed by the left foot, exhale. Inhale, half forward, fold hands to shins. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, engaging the abs, coming out with a flat back. And exhale, hands into heart center. Really nice. 
All right, we're doing the same thing on the other side. So we're going to inhale, raising our arms up, hands touching or shoulder width apart. Exhale, engaging that core, coming down with a flat back. Hands on the side of the feet. Four up, Uttanasana, four, four, four. Bending the knees if you have to. Inhale, half four, fold hands to shins. Or if you're warming up and your hamstrings allow fingertips to mat. So hands down, stepping back with the left foot, followed by the right foot into our plank. Staying here for one breath. Inhale and exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down into our eight point pose, Ashtangasana. Inhale, we slide forward into our cobra again. Belly on the ground, lower ribs are still on the ground. The rest of the chest is lifted, chest forward. Shoulders together, shoulders away from the ears, looking forward. Tucking our toes, we're pushing into our downward dog. Again, stepping in if you have to. Focusing on your breath, you're engaging your core a little bit. Imagining the, the belly, the body of a great, like of a, of a right racing dog, a greyhound dog, a whippet, where it's big chest and then the tummy is really uh, big sort of pulled in. That's what you want to do in the way of you engaging your core. Breathing here. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, we're stepping forward with the left foot in between our hands. Exhale, followed by the right foot. Inhale, half forward, fall again, hands to shins or fingertips to mat. Exhale, full forward, fold. Inhale, engaging the core, we're coming up with the flat back. Hands together overhead and exhale, hands into heart centre. Lovely. I'm going to do one more of these. And um, if you want, you can try and come down from your plank in Chaturanga. So instead of doing knees, chest, chin, it's almost like a triceps press up. All right, let's go for it. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, let's fall down. Fall, forward, forward, Uttanasana, forward, shins, bending my knees if I have to. Inhale, half forward, fold, hands to shins. All fingertips to mat, really feeling the engagement in your hamstrings. Hands down, stepping back with the right foot, followed by the left foot. Inhaling here, and then on the exhale, you could bend your arms and come down in one, and then slide for into a cobra, uh, into a upward dog. Sorry, for upward dog, normally I can't really demonstrate, but only your the back of your foot and your hands are into the mat. Nothing else is touching. And then from here, we're rolling over our toes, pushing into our down dog. But Cobra is just as great. Again, in our down dog, stepping our feet in a little bit if we want to, pushing the hands, pushing ground away with our hands, shoulder blades apart, shoulders away from the ears, flat back, tucking in, Pulling in the stomach, aiming to get our heels onto the ground. Maybe one day we can, but that doesn't really matter. Also, the warmer you are, the more sun salutations you do, the warmer your hamstrings will be, and maybe the closer you can get your heels to the ground. On your first sun salutation, you're never going to, it's difficult to achieve it. Not never, but Difficult. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. The next inhale, we're going to set our right foot in between our hands, followed by the left foot on the exhale. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, engaging the core, we're coming out with the flat back. Hands together overhead. Exhale, hands into heart centre. One more. Inhale. Exhale, we're folding down. Inhale, half forward, fold. So hands down, stepping back with the left foot, followed by the right foot. Inhale and plank. And again, you could try and lower down in that triceps push up, or knees down, chest down, chin down. 
sliding forward into our cobra or upward dog. Upward dog after you've done that press up your chaturanga. Rolling over our toes, coming into our down dog. Setting our feet in if we need to. Setting our downward dog up as we have learned. One more breath here, inhale, exhale, inhale, stepping the left foot between the hands, followed by the right foot, inhale, half forward, full hands to the shins, the fingertips to mat, and exhale, hands down, folding forward, inhale, engaging the core, we're coming up, exhale, hands into heart center. I think generally when you warm up for Couple with standing poses, two sun salutations is a great way to warm your body up, but you can do obviously as many as you want. Um, we're going to do a, um, a couple of standing poses now. Um, Sandra, if you've got problems with your knees there, just don't bend your knees as much. We're going to do that from the front of our mat. So we're going to step back with the left foot quite wide, just quite far back. Um, we want to sort of have our back foot, the left foot, not parallel to the short edge of the mat, but a bit sort of in between, like a 45 degree angle. We're then bending that front knee for our warrior two. We're lifting our arms. We're standing here. We want our body nice and flat. We want our chest in line with the long edge of the mat. As we look at our front knee, our knee is not supposed to overshoot our ankle, that's protecting our knee as well as our ankle now, I've realized. Um, and we also want to see that we can see our toes and that our knee's not falling in. If it's falling in, we need to push it out a little bit, keeping our knees, our ankles safe. Looking towards our middle finger of the front hand. Breathing here, making sure that the back arm isn't drooping. And can be pulling back a little bit. Imagine someone's pulling you by the back hand and by the front hand. And it's like a bit of a fight, and at some point you end up perfectly in the middle over your heads. Breathing here in and out through your nose. And the next exhale, we're going to bring our right. Um, forearm just on the, spit, the bit above your knee. I'm going to stretch over here for our um, Parvottanasana or intense east side stretch as it is translated. And we're really, again, like we did when we did our seated side stretch, pulling with that front arm. Lovely, and coming up into our warrior two again. We're straightening that front knee if we can. And coming into, we're reaching forward, we're pulling forward with our arms, sorry. And then we're folding down into a triangle. Lovely, making yourself really flat, stacking your hips on top of each other, shoulders on top of each other. I'm going to come out of this now because it's not lovely for my ankle. Not really. Making yourself flat looking towards your top hand or just straight ahead of you, whatever is more comfortable. Feeling that stretch on the inner thigh. And with the next inhale, we're coming up and lowering our arms and however possible, maybe walking our back foot in a little bit and stepping forward into, back to where we started. We're going, to, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, and we did it from the other side so you can see it. So again, so we're stepping back now with the right foot. And here again, I would normally say, um, as I said, so the foot is not parallel if you can, not parallel to the short edge of your mat, but pointing forward a little bit. I can't really do that with my ankle today, but you guys do what Again, listen to your body. If you're like, oh no, my ankle isn't feeling great today, or my knee is not great today, I can't really do that. Yeah, that's a lovely, lovely foot position, Sandra. 
And then we're going to bend that front knee as much as we can. If all we can do is tiny bend today, that's perfect. Whatever feels good. I'm going to raise our arms. We're going to make sure that our body is in line with the long edge of the mat. We're going to make sure that our knee is above our ankle, that the knee is not falling in, so that we can see our toes. You don't want either of the arms to droop. And also what I said, imagine someone's pulling you by the hands, that you're nice in center. Looking towards the front middle finger. Really nice, guys. Drishti focus point is the front middle finger. That focus point, that drishti, it's a little bit like we're building concentration. One pose, one day at a time. Shoulders are nice and relaxed and down. We're not pulling them up to our ears. On the exhale, our forearms coming just above our, our knee and coming into our intense east side stretch. Looking towards the palm of the right hand. With that stretching, that arm stretching, making us long. Or just straight ahead. Imagine this is a ski slope from the middle finger of your right hand all the way down to your right, the edge of your right foot. Like a little skier could just go down there and get so much speed. Make it nice and straight and flat. Okay, on the inhale, coming back up into over here too. I'm straightening that front leg. Okay. And to come to our Trikasana, someone's pulling us by that front hand, the left hand, and then we're folding down. If you had a block here, you could place your hand on that block. I've got my blocks conveniently on the other side of the mat. Or you can just place your hand, obviously, on your shin. Maybe don't lock your knees out. Have a tiny micro bend here that will protect your knees a little bit. And next inhale, coming up, lowering our arms, exhale, and then maybe we're walking that back foot in a little bit so we can come to the front of our mat. I'm going to do a balance. I would say we're doing tree. I can show you on the left side and on the right side you have to fly solo. So we're going to stand with our Intadasana, feet touching, lifting our toes up, dropping them down one at a time, Maybe coming on to lifting off our heels, placing our heels down. Really nice and solid grounding here. And we're going to lift our right leg up and then come into a tree. So for tree, you can either have your foot on the ground and the heel just resting above your ankle of the left leg. You can have your foot against the calf and you can have the foot against your thigh. Whatever feels good today hands in heart center or above your head i love your cat sandra <laughs> doing yoga as well and just stand wherever feels good for you today stay for one more breath inhale and exhale we let go I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so again let's first put our feet next to each other Lifting our toes off the ground, lowering down one at a time, maybe lifting the heels up, nice firm grounding here. And again, you can do the sort of first version of this pose with your foot, the toes on the ground and your heel just above the ankle or your foot on the calf or against the inner thigh, whatever feels good. I actually can do that with my foot on the ground. See, this is what's so brilliant about an arms overhead or in heart center, where it feels good. That's what's so fantastic about all these variations when it comes to yoga, that even with maybe a bit of a muggy ankle, you can still do tree pose. Beautiful. Lovely. Now we bring your hands into center, heart center and letting go. Lovely guys, so that's probably another 15-ish minutes of our standing sequence. So again, if you only have 15 minutes time for yoga, you could do that. So let's come down. If at any point if you just have to leave because we've got stuff to do, the weather is good, don't worry, you can I understand. 
Let's just come down for a seated sequence. That's going to be another 15-ish minutes, hopefully. Um, I'm going to start in Dandasana. Dandasana, start pose. So that's literally just sitting um, with our legs straight out, toes engaged, toes flexed, pointing up. If this is really difficult for you to sit like that and not collapse in your lower back, take a cushion and you can sit on that cushion and that will give you a little bit of lift that will make that a bit more uh, available. And let's just sit here, really flexing our toes, shoulders back, nice and flat back, looking towards the toes, that's our drishti. Already working our hamstrings here a little bit and also engaging your quads. Maybe you can see my toes are shaking a little bit, or my feet are shaking a little bit. Like, really do yoga even when you're just just sitting. One more breath here. And exhale. Maybe releasing, pointing your toes forward a little bit. We're going to do um, seated forward fold twice. If you want, have a belt or towel or whatever. And loop those around the belt, around your feet, and hold on to it. And inhale, you're sitting up nice and tall. If you don't use a belt, you can just raise your arms. Inhale, and exhale. We're folding from our hip. We don't want to um, collapse too much. Just do as much as you can, and keeping a nice flat back. Breathing here for five, feeling that engagement. I'm sitting nice and tall, if not tall, but if your chest is open and if you really um, force yourself to get a hold of your feet or whatever and you do that by rounding your shoulders, your chest isn't open anymore. Stay for one more breath, inhale and exhale. If you're using a belt, just sliding along that belt and coming up. Let's bend our knees and just hug our knees for a moment if that feels good. Lifting our head, we're doing the same thing again, so you can leave your belt where it was. If you used one, we're going to hold our belt again. Inhale, nice and open chest, and hinging from our hip like a door, we're going forward, the side forward. And I'm not particularly pulling on my belt right now, because I don't want to hurt my foot anymore, so just holding it. And you can even let go of the belt. And really just by engaging your body, engaging your hamstrings, just placing your hands wherever you want them. It's quite nice to have that little bell to grab onto. At least I enjoy it. Everybody is different. Breathing here, in and out through the nose, connecting to the breath in these challenging poses. And next inhale, we're sliding up, we're coming up. We can let go of our belt for a moment, taking that to the side. Just sitting on a cushion, maybe take that away. Once again, bending our knees, hugging ourselves in. You can even try to lift your feet off the ground and just balance on your sit bones or on your bum. All right, let's let that go. I'm going to do Janu Shishasana. Uh, head to knee pose. I'm going to place a cushion under my foot, just so I have a little bit of extra cushioning here. So we're going to have our legs stretched out and we're going to bend the right leg. And place the sole of the right foot against the inner thigh of the left. I'm going to, again, if you want a belt, you could take a belt. And I might just <laughs> put on the side. And here we want to do a little micro twist so that our chest isn't pointing in between our legs but over that straight leg. And if you have your belt, inhale, opening the chest, sitting nice and tall. Inhale, sitting nice and tall. 
and exhale, we're folding down again, we're hinging from the hips, so the back straight, straight, and we're holding on to the belt, maybe you can grab your foot or your ankle, wherever you are, every option is just as valid as the other. Very nice. Feeling that stretch in the hamstring and the inner thigh. Inhale, coming up gently. Exhale, we're letting go of the belt. We're going to come briefly, if that's all right for your knees, Sandra, into a cobbler pose. And for cobbler pose, again, I've got my feet on my cushion so that my ankle isn't pressing into the floor too much. And you can have your knees as, um, as um, right, far forward. If you have your feet a bit further forward and that diamond shape of your legs is a bit longer, that's not so hard on your knees maybe, or you bring your feet closer to your, to your, um, to your groin effectively, and maybe hold onto your feet or place your hands in front of you, whatever feels good, and let's just stay here for a moment. come out of this pose. We've already got our feet close to us, so we're just going to stretch out our right leg now and we're going to pull our left foot in a little more so we can do Janshasana on the other side. And so, Janshasana. Again, if you have a belt that you want to use, place that around the ball of our foot. We want to do that micro twist so that our chest is not facing in between our legs, but the chest is pointing facing the front, the right foot. Inhale, we're sitting up nice and tall, and exhale, we're folding down. And we're breathing here. sliding up again and we can get rid of our belt now we don't need that anymore I'm going to come into a actually let's do another quick cobbler pose just because we've done that before quite nice I really love this pose nice op hip opening and nice um, little um, Stretch, oh sorry, release for the back. All right, let's come out of this. I'm going to do a little bit of ab work with Navasana. So for Navasana, so as again, Navasana, there's various options. I'll show a couple. So you could just have your hands on the ground and you could just lift your legs up. And by keeping your hands off the ground, you're not too challenged with your balance. You could raise your hands off the ground, your arms and legs are both out here, or you could try to straighten your legs various options. You could even just stay here with your feet on the floor. And if you really engage your abs, that's still working your abs. That's still a version of Navasana. So decide what we're going to do. And we're staying wherever we are. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. And we're letting go. We're dropping our feet. Let's hug ourselves again. Maybe again, if you want to, you could try and lift your feet off the ground, balancing a bit. And letting go. We're going to do that twice more. So decide which, <laughs> which, uh, <coughs> which version of Navasana you're going to go for. Lifting your feet, maybe. Maybe also lifting your arms. Maybe trying to get your legs as straight as you possibly can. Yeah, or holding behind the knees. That's perfect, Sandra. And five, four, three, two, one. And dropping the knees, sitting upright, and then hugging on these again. Maybe if you could, I could see my feet shaking in that second one, so no working. 
All right, and one more. Rocking back, place knees and hands behind us, lifting our knees, if our feet, maybe hands behind our, our knees, arms out, and five. Really great, guys. Four. Three. Two. One. Lovely. Hugging our knees. Very nice. I want to show you one quick thing. We don't have to do that for that long, but one of my... Sorry, I'm just having to move a few things around. Um, one of my favorite poses is um, pigeon. Really nice hip opener. I'm not sure if that's going to work for you, uh, Sandra, because we're bending our knees quite a bit. But unfortunately, with my knee, uh, with my ankle, I can't really do that because the ankle is really pressing into the ground. But there's a really fun version of this, which is against the wall. So I'm just trying to do it so that you can see me. Yeah. So if you wanted to ever do that, and this is actually quite a chilled version of it as well because it's quite passive. And the more your bottom is against the wall, the more it helps. And we're going to take, you could take your foot, just place it there, and the closer, you can do that without a wall as well, actually. But the wall helps that you can't round your back. Oh yeah, against the sofa, perfect. Or let's just do it without a wall. And you could just, yeah, brilliant. Love it. <laughs> Everyone's finding something. And then the, the closer that foot that's on the floor is to your bum, and you will feel that the more intense the, um, the stretch becomes in your glute. Mama, du kannst dich auch gegen dein Sofa setzen. And just as a little one, like this is really, it doesn't require, because it's quite passive, you could just, you could get a book, or if you're playing on your phone or whatever, you could just do it um, like that. And rather than having to do it on the ground, I think it's a really nice version of it to, um, <laughs> and obviously the more you sort of like, I've tried to find that if I sit straighter, and I put my leg, my back and my glutes more against the wall, it gets a lot more, or not glutes, but the lower back, it gets a lot more intense. Let's just switch over. So, placing that. And then as much or as little as possible. And obviously you can do this on, like, if you've got wooden floor or carpet, it's quite good as well because it's not too slippy. Don't hurt your knee just by moving that foot that's on the ground further away, you're taking intensity out of it. And that's really releasing your glutes. I'm just sitting here, relaxing for a moment. <laughs> just a nice little version of sort of taking a movement that we generally do with our chest to the ground and doing it seating, seated, maybe that's more accessible to some way, in some way, maybe it's more comfortable. So there's a lot of ways to play around with these things. And then we can come out of that now. And we are going to move on to our back. So back to uh, how we were. And we're lying on our backs with our knees into the air. And again, Sandra, if that's something that with your knees you don't really want to do, but we would do bridge. Just, and actually here, sorry, I always realize that when I come up, I'm actually doing it in a really, like sort of, not how you're supposed to, if you come up like that, it's a bit of strain, but it's quite a nice way when you're lying on your back, just grabbing your behind your thigh and just rolling up like that. It's actually a lot better for your body. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so if you have blocks, you could just take a block and place that under your bum. And that is still bridge, but a lot more gentle. And there's less pressure on your knees like that. So you can either use the block and do this really gentle passive bridge and just lie here for the next minute or so. Or if you want to do a bit more of an active version, without the block, 
Feet towards our glutes as much as we can. Maybe we can see if we touch them. Feet hip width apart. Knees pointing to the ceiling. Hands either side of our glutes. Palms into the ground. And inhale. We're tucking our pelvis and we're lifting up. We're going to do two of these. We're going to hold in the air for three. We're pushing our hips to the ceiling and our chest to our chin. Holding for three. Two. And one, and on the exhale, we're gently coming down. And again, if you want, you could do the second one just with the block under your glutes. Lovely, lovely passive version. Or inhale, and we're lifting our glutes up. And we're staying up here. Three. Two. And one, and lowering down, upper back, middle back, lower back. We're going to hug our knees into our chest, as much or as little as, as comfortable. You could even just place your hands which in behind your knees, between uh, calf and thigh, and just hug them in like that. Don't hurt yourself, rocking from side to side, massaging our lower back. And then, we can drop our knees to the right side. If you have a block, you can place a block under your knees. It's really nice not having that contact with the block. Or dropping your knees onto the floor uh, on one side. So the right leg is on the ground, we're dropping to the right, the left knee, is, or the left leg is on top of the right leg, stacked. And we're lying here. Arms like a capital T. We're looking towards the left side, the opposite direction, and we're closing our eyes. We're lifting our legs up, moving through center. And we're dropping our knees to the left side now. Stretching to the other side. Again, if you have a block or a cushion, place that block under your calves, under your knees. Taking a bit of the intensity out, but also really enjoying really lovely stretch. Looking to the opposite side. Arms still capital T at shoulder level, but not pulling the shoulders up to the ears. Breathing here. knees back into center. We're hugging our knees again, maybe rocking from side to side. And today we're actually going to sit in cross-legged for that short final relaxation. So we're going to bring our hands behind our knees between um, calves and thigh. We're trying to rock up and down and come into a seated pose. Nice comfortable cross-legged, lovely. Really nice rocking there, also giving our back a little massage. Again, you can sit in cross-legged, or you can sit on a little block, or you could even, as earlier, you could just sit like this. Whatever feels good. Keep this quite nice. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a bit of fiddling around to finding what to enjoy, just sitting on, on blocks or whatever. Um, and before we do so that was about another 15-ish minutes um, and obviously there's loads of other poses that you could chuck in um, take out if you ever want to do yoga by yourself um, and as a finishing sequence which is also going to relax us and balance us i want to do nadi shudana as our pranayama which is a alternate nostril breathing. So for that, just to show you, come a little bit closer. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just watch first. So we're going to do this pran pranayama mudra. So we're going to bend our uh, index finger, our middle finger in, and then we're going to shut the 
right nostril, so it's the right hand, right nostril with the thumb, left nostril with the um, ring finger. And we're going to alternate that way and breathing through one nostril and then the other. And with the other hand, you can just place that on your, on your knee. You could do Gyan Mudra, some Mudra for Wisdom, whatever feels good to you. Or any, in a way, anything that feels good to your hand is the Mudra that your body just wants right now. Mudra's like uh, locks and um, like hand gestures. And there's some that have certain meanings, like this one meaning um, wisdom, but there's others. Anyway, so we're going to <laughs> um, do a um, prayam mudra here. I'm going to inhale, exhale through the nose. I'm going to now shut our right nostril. I'm going to inhale through the left, exhale through the left. We're going to switch over, closing the left, opening the right. Inhale, exhale. We're closing the right, opening the left. Inhale, exhale. And that would be run, one round done. Let's do another couple more. So let's shut the left, open the right. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Switch over. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Switch over, close and open. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, close the right, open the left, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, close the open, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, close the open, inhale, two, three, four, Exhale, two, three, four. Close the left, open the right. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Close the right, open the left. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. One more, close the left, open the right, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Close the right, open the left, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. We're going to drop that right hand also on the, on the, on the knee keeping our eyes closed and we're just going to sit here for a moment feeling those effects of our pranayama what this pranayama does is it balances our breath between our nostrils and also between um, the sides of our body in um, in yoga philosophy, the right side of the body is um, associated with strength and masculinity and the sun. And the left side is associated with creativity, femininity and the moon. We all have both sides, both parts in, in us at all times and in order to be balanced we need to balance those two sides. Another interesting fun little fact I think is that we tend to, when we breathe we think we breathe equally through both nostrils but actually we tend to breathe in through one nostril for a couple of 
for an hour or two, I think, and then predominantly through the other one. And by doing this breath, we're actually balancing our breathing out. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Lovely. And with this pranayama as well, you can do, I think we did like maybe five, seven-ish rounds. You can also set a timer and do two minutes, five minutes of that. And that's a really nice way to relax. And just doing that, if you think about the fact, as I was saying at the beginning of class, that yoga asana or the movement of yoga is one of the eight limbs of yoga. And pranayama is its own very separate limb on yoga. So if you don't have time to do a full hour yoga session, you could do just 10 minutes here or there, or you could just say, I'm going to do five minute breathing and you're still doing yoga and you'll feel, hopefully you'll feel a bit more balanced after, especially with this really weird Christmas coming up. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. So it's a bit longer, <laughs> it took a bit longer than I thought it would. Um, I hope you had a good time. Um,